It could be war, Tom and Roseanne Arnold versus the cast of Seinfeld, and it's all over a parking space. Inside Edition, straight ahead. It was a dream vacation in Brazil for Steve, Julie, and their five-year-old daughter, Stephanie. Everything was fine until they tried to come home. I'm sad and in, in despair because I don't know what's going on with my father. Today on Inside Edition, the parents who had to come home alone because Uncle Sam said, leave your daughter behind. Just one question. Like, warned to uphold the law. This judge was convicted of breaking it big time. I honestly and genuinely feel in my heart and my mind that I have not done any criminal activity. But now it's time to serve his sentence and the bad boy of the bench has skipped town. Let's go. Stand by. In Hollywood, the only thing more precious than fame is a good parking space. I don't think it's right to park in other people's parking spaces. I believe it's immoral to do so. <laughs> now TV's most popular sitcom stars are fighting, not over prime time, but prime parking. Two, one. Hello, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching Inside Edition today. Have you heard about the latest Hollywood scandal? It seems Julia Louis-Dreyfus from the Seinfeld show parked in Tom Arnold's space. Uh-oh. Well, Tom took action, and now there's an uproar in showbiz land. We'll talk with Tom and Roseanne Arnold and have the latest. But first, a very serious story about an American couple forced to leave their little daughter in a foreign country. And our investigation shows the U.S. government was the bad guy. Here's Tony Cox. I really don't know what to do now. It was a mother's worst pain. Julie Denise had lost her daughter. But it didn't make sense. She didn't lose her to illness or even death, but to government red tape. And I'm sad and in, in despair because I don't know what's going on with my daughter. Here's what happened. Julie Denise is an American citizen, but her husband and five-year-old daughter are not. Last Christmas, the Denises decided to go back to Brazil for the holidays and take Stephanie, but not before they checked with a U.S. immigration official in Atlanta to make certain her passport and visa were in order. He, he looked him over and he said, no, there's no problem. Huh? I said, does she need a visa? He said, well, we can't give her a visa here. She has to get one outside, but she really doesn't need a visa. What she needs is a letter from the council, American consulate authorizing her to travel under your care. But they got the shock of their lives when they tried to return from Brazil. The U.S. consulate in Rio de Janeiro wouldn't let little Stephanie back into the States because she didn't have a visa. And the consulate said it would take three months to get one. The distraught parents who couldn't afford to stay in Brazil because of work and school commitments back in Birmingham were forced to leave their little girl 7,000 miles from home. Finally, you know, when I realized that she had to stay, it, uh, I mean, both of us, we just, I, I don't even know how to explain what we felt. They left Stephanie with relatives and returned to the States, where they began a desperate effort to get her back. Stephanie's schoolmates appealed to Chelsea Clinton at the White House for help. Then area congressman Spencer Backus got involved, demanding that our own when government do involved, something. They told us it would be a three-month process. We basically said, that's not acceptable. Uh, I then called them back and said, not only is it not acceptable to me, the people of Birmingham want this child back. Nearly two months went by before any real progress was made. But then the parents couldn't afford to fly back to Brazil to get her. That's when the community pitched in and donated the airfare. So in the first week of February, Stevenson Denise left Birmingham for Brazil to bring his daughter home. He didn't know there were more obstacles ahead. It was in Brazil that our camera crew first met Stevenson and Stephanie. But when we arrived with father and daughter at the U.S. consulate later that morning, there was trouble. First, he couldn't get into the building despite having an appointment, and no one would listen to him. What about his appointment at 8 o'clock? 
Then we were told we couldn't take pictures, even on the sidewalk outside. This is what you have been going through. Yeah, I can see. After several more anxious minutes, they were finally let in. Then an hour later, they came out, hopeful but not overconfident that all had gone well. It was so hard to talk to, you know. They call everybody before they let you in, and you still make an ugly face sometimes. Yeah, it was... I mean, you, you yeah. heard it. Yeah. The smile was already returning to Stephanie's face. She was in her daddy's lap, and she would see her mom soon. You're going to go back to the United States. How about that? Are you happy? You're happy, okay. If you're happy, we're happy. Last February 11th, everybody was happy as the Stevensons were reunited at Birmingham Airport. It marked the end of their holiday nightmare. But through the hugs and kisses, there remains a certain pain and anger over an American being treated that way by America. Well, U.S. consular officials refuse to discuss the visa problems for the family, citing confidentiality. Plenty more to come as Inside Edition continues. We'll try and get to the bottom of the great parking space controversy between the lead actress on Seinfeld and Tom Arnold. She says, my place, I, I had to park there because my place, it, it, you can't park there with all the construction. Oh, here's her place. Look at the construction. It's unbelievable. How would you handle something like this? I'm furious. <laughs> It's a law case, it's a tool case, it's a toy case, and a bar case. It's a door store bookcase, it's a kitchen case, it's an entertainment case, it's a closet case, it's a nearly six foot tall case, but it's not $100. During bookcase month at the door store, buy tall bookcases from just $39. And $39 is a strong case for going to the door store. Irresistible. It's Toyota's Simply Irresistible sales event. Your Toyota dealer invites you to check out Camry. Simply Irresistible. Camry, one of the 10 best cars you can own. Camry, the best car built in the U.S. And with an incredible lease deal of just $279 a month for 36 months, Camry gets even better. So hurry and see your Toyota dealer now, because Toyota deals are just... I'm Penny Daniels. Tonight on 7.30, anti-abortionists say they're sorry a doctor died at a protest outside his clinic, but they add, just think how many babies were saved. David Koresh's mother tries to storm his Waco ranch. And guess what else? He's in love with Madonna. Jessica Hahn's back in a big way. Another good old boy downs a rat with his brew and sues. Join us for much more at 7.30. Give me some money. Give us your briefcase. The New York Times calls Falling Down a wickedly entertaining suspense thriller. Engrossing and remarkable. Douglas is incredible. Michael Douglas. You forgot the briefcase! Falling Down, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. It's the return of Suzanne. <laughs> with a touch of glass. And a lot of sass. Well, maybe it is hard to meet men. I mean, for you. Designing Women. Weekdays at 11 and 11.30 on WSBN 7. If you have ever been to L.A., you know that cars are big there, very big. In fact, the only thing more impressive than a fancy car is a space to park it in. So when Julia Louis-Dreyfus from Seinfeld parked in Tom Arnold's spot, Roseanne's husband did not like it one bit. And Tom, as he is known to do, took action. Our special correspondent, Sam Rubin, with the story. Three of television's hottest warriors are The Seinfeld Show. Hey, Joe! Hey! The Jackie Thomas Show. Now this is what I like. You see that? Big boobs and big butts, just like Mom. And the leader of the pack, Roseanne. How could you tell Nancy that you were abducted by space aliens? Each competes for laughs and ratings, but now these three shows are competing for something far more precious than a big audience. In Hollywood, there's nothing cherished more than a good parking space. 
You know, you become a really genuine television star when the studio gives you one of these. Not your own Bentley Turbo, but your own personalized parking space. This is Tom Arnold's parking space. And when another big star just happened to park in Tom's space, well, that's when all the trouble began. I mean, I wouldn't care, you know, it, but but this is my car. If I had a piece of garbage car like this, you know, I would care. I'd park it right up against the wall there. But this is nice. According to Tom, the scoundrel who parked in his space on the CBS MTM parking lot was none other than Seinfeld co-star Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I'm furious. I think she was feeling a little giddy, a little heady from her recent uh, win on the American Comedy Awards. Uh, just yesterday, only a few hours after his wife appeared with me on the KTLA Morning News, Tom explained to us his view of what exactly happened between him and Ms. Louis Dreyfus. She says, my place, I, I had to park there because my place, it, it, you can't park there with all the construction. Oh, well, here's her place. Look at the construction. It's unbelievable. How would you handle something like this? The confrontation came after she said she came up and had the note in her hand. And I said, oh, that was your car. Okay, I, I'm not mad. She said, well, I am mad. We called Julia Louis-Dreyfus's manager, publicist, even the Seinfeld show to find out what exactly she was mad at. But we're told no one had a comment. I don't think it's right to park in other people's parking spaces. I believe it's immoral to do so. <laughs> Tom left her a note that was not necessarily a particularly polite note? No, but he didn't mean it to her. He was writing the note to the person who parked in his space. He doesn't know what car she has. Right. But he wrote it on a car that said, don't park in my space with an expletive. I uh, wrote a note. I said, how stupid are you? Uh, move your blank car blank. You know, that's a standard note I put on people's cars when they park in my spot. I didn't know whose car it was. She goes, so this is an offensive letter. And I go, well, I'm sorry. You know what? I didn't know it was your car. I put it on there. I put those on everybody's cars to park in my space. I figure if you're going to park in my space, you better have a good sense of humor. Roseanne has a history of stepping in and fighting for her husband. You'll recall the nasty letters she wrote to the critics who didn't like her husband's show. So it wasn't long until she decided to get into this fray. Uh, people have accused me of writing a couple of nasty things on her window and soap and placing a picture of a nude man. Uh, that was not my butt. It was just, People said it was my butt. USA Today said it was my butt. It's not my butt. And uh, my butt has a tattoo of Rosie. I'll show it to you. It's right here. There's my tattoo. Oh, baby. No one's admitting whose derriere is actually in that photo, though Tom says uh, it's a close they, they, friend they, they, of they, they his. My butt. Well, that was not my butt. It was another friend of mine's butt who has a butt similar to, in size to mine. <laughs> though Roseanne told us she wanted to put a stop to this fight before it got way out of hand, she couldn't help but stick a needle in now and then. Look, they may That's have amazing. an attitude over there. They may sometimes <laughs> think that they're doing Samuel Beckett instead of a sitcom. <laughs> but let me reassure, reassure them and everyone else, they are indeed doing a sitcom, and it's a very good sitcom, and I'm a it fan is. of it. How do you, if, if in fact that's what you want to do, how do you want to put an end to this here right now? Or do you? I do want to put an end to it. I, I believe that it's just an ugly, festering sore on, on the image of everyone good and and decent in this town. <laughs> and uh, Julia, I'd like to extend the olive branch to you and, and say, let's stop now before Time and the New York Times are involved. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, too, finally appeared ready to call the whole thing off, even though his friend Jerry Seinfeld's car was taking up two spaces just across from his car. Jerry said he thought it was funny. We thought it was funny. And so I'm sure that everybody's having a big laugh. After all, we do comedy shows here. We're comedians. We have to have good senses of humor. When do they have time to tape the shows? That's what I want to know. And in Hollywood, your parking space is often based on your ratings. Roseanne is number two. Seinfeld is number 10. And Arnold's Jackie Thomas is number 26. Coming next, a judge who breaks the law. And later, the amazing Kreskin investigates spooks in a ski lodge. <laughs> something or someone here or something unsettled it would make your skin crawl on monday when the mayor was arrested by two officers did he get the charges dropped by having the cops fired inside edition investigates i like the sound of all the shrimp i can eat sizzlers yeah sounds good throw in a stink Knocks me off my feet. Sizzlers. Yeah. 
Sounds good. Think of it. All the shrimp you can eat and a juicy steak to go with it. Sound good? Better hurry. It's just $8.99 for limited time. Sounds good. Sizzler. That sounds good. Two days only. Extra savings at Byron's. An extra 15% off. Friday and Saturday, Byron's gives you extra savings throughout the store. Byron's takes an extra 15% off everything. An extra 15% off all fashions for women. An extra 15% off all fashions for men and children. An extra 15% off all regular sale and clearance prices. Friday and Saturday, two days only at Byron's. An extra 15% off everything in the store. At Byron's. Tell us about it. What'd you see? It looked like, uh, like a fire. The police thought they were lying. We're singing the story. The town thought they were guilty. I want you to take a lie detector test. You want to press charges? You do it now. But these five men saw what happened. Ball! To Travis Walton. The impossible. Fire in the sky. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, March 12th at theaters everywhere. $500. Raymond Honda will beat any advertised price in South Florida on a new Honda. $500. Accord, Civic, Prelude, Del Sol. Raymond Honda will beat any advertised price on any new Honda. By $500. Only Raymond Honda. Dade County's number one volume Honda sales leader makes this incredible offer. Choose from over 500 new Hondas with no hassle. Save an extra $500. At Raymond Honda, your hometown Honda dealer. In the heart of Miami on Bird Road at the Palmetto Expressway. We love you. I knew something must be wrong. I was getting these sharp pains and sometimes pressure and bloating. I'm glad I asked my doctor. He said it was gas and recommended Mylanta Gas. Mylanta Gas. It has the best medicine for gas. This sign is unmistakable. So are these. Use it any time of day and Fact Plus will show you a plus sign if you're pregnant, a minus sign if you're not. Fact Plus. Easy to read so you know for sure. There is little worse than a powerful judge who violates his trust and breaks the law. We have been following the story of a judge in Pennsylvania who did just that. And now the story has taken a new turn. Rick Kirkham with our report. Johnstown, Pennsylvania is a town of survivors. 100 years ago, it was wiped out by a devastating flood. And over the years, other floods have taken their toll. Like his community, Joseph Okiki considered himself a survivor, but in a different way. Okiki, once the most powerful judge in the county, is now a criminal, convicted of radically abusing his judicial powers. In a 1989 interview with Inside Edition, Okiki offered an explanation for the troubles that drove him from the bench. I have offended some very powerful political people that uh, play behind the scenes in the operation of politics in this county, in this state, and in this country. Judge Okiki maintained from the beginning that the charges against him stemmed not from legitimacy, but rather from a vendetta on the part of a local millionaire and his political cronies. That millionaire is W.D. or Wid Shonick. He and his brother amassed a fortune by creating a chain of auto parts stores. Okiki says Shonick became irate a few years ago after Shonick's brother gave an estimated $2 million worth of stock in the brother's business to a local school as a gift. With Shonick blaming Okiki with talking his brother into a charitable gift. And, uh, Mr. Wid Shonick indicated that he would chop off my head and shove it up my rear. Uh, and since that day, uh, there has been an investigation on me, yes. That investigation led to Okiki's trial in 1989. The jury refused to believe his story of a Shonick vendetta and convicted the judge on charges of bribery, official oppression, coercion, and demanding money for a promotion. Okiki was sentenced to two to five years in prison. He remained free on $100,000 bond pending an appeal of his conviction. But that appeal was denied, and Okiki was supposed to surrender to begin serving his sentence last week. He didn't appear at a scheduled hearing, and his whereabouts are unknown. I was surprised that a man with the uh, experience as a judge, uh, such as Joseph Okiki had, that he would not uh, obey an order of a court of common pleas, knowing what the ultimate ramifications would be. There is speculation that Okiki fled to the former Yugoslavia, where his wife is studying on a Fulbright scholarship. 
it seems he prefers the strife of a bloody civil war to the promise of prison time. The information that we have from the Slovenian embassy uh, definitely suggests to us that they are aware of him. His name uh, was not foreign to them. In fact, they had an address, in fact, gave us uh, a telephone number in Slovenia uh, that uh, we could possibly reach an individual who could contact Joseph Okiki. Now, the former judge is a fugitive. He didn't show up, and that's the criteria. He's not here. And for that reason, I had to uh, do what I did, which was revoke the bail and uh, direct that he be picked up and brought to the Western Penitentiary. I honestly and genuinely feel in my heart and my mind that I have not done any criminal activity and I have not done any illegal or unethical activity. Well, authorities in Europe have been asked to look for Okiki, and while his wife has filed for divorce, investigators still suspect they are both in the former Yugoslavia. And when Inside Edition comes back in just a moment, the amazing Kreskin tracking down some frisky spirits. Think of what's happening, folks. I feel like we can eat. Oh, it's enough. Yeah, you really can't. Loretta, is that not wild? What do you think it was? I don't know. Uh-oh. I forgot the cereal. Look, look at them. Come on. Oh, my favorite. Honey bunches of oats. Mine, too. We'll get two boxes. Mom will mind. I wonder what's keeping the kids. I'll get them. Huh, the kids aren't here. Oh. Well, I'll get my favorite, honey bunches of oats. With crispy corn and wheat flakes and crunchy oat bunches, it's the cereal your whole family will love. Three boxes? Well, what do we do now? Get more milk? <laughs> <laughs> honey bunches of oats with almonds or honey roasted, the one cereal your whole family will love. My daughter said she's too busy to use Old English oil, so... So I... she got me Old English spray. It conditions in practically no time to help prevent drying and cracking. You're never too busy to give your wood the royal treatment with Old English. As you can see, your dishwasher detergent gets the dirt off, but water alone can't get all of the detergent off. Jet Dry Rinse Agent can! Jet Dry rinses off residues for shiny, clean dishes. In the past, decorating meant running all around trying to put a room together. Now, you just walk into a rooms-to-go showroom Find a room you love among our 100 different room packages, and it's done. Each fabric, table, lamp, and accessory decorator coordinated. Each living room, bedroom, or dining set unbeatably priced by the piece or by the room. And available for delivery within a week, guaranteed. It's that easy. Rooms to go. Taking the runaround out of decorating. In Tallahassee, the courts continue to play ping pong with the Lozano retrial. The state appeals court moved the Lozano retrial yet again. Whether the trial will happen here, we'll all have to wait and see. It. In Washington, Janet Reno is on her way to becoming the nation's top cop. One over Democrats and Republicans alike. The biggest stories are on 7 News. This is Penny Daniels. Holographic games, car computers, video dating, and movies anytime you want. Welcome to the new world of techno pleasures, tonight on 7.30. Kreskin versus the spirits in a moment, but first, here's what's upcoming on Inside Edition. Don't believe in UFOs? This man's frightening experience may change your mind. This feeling of loss of control, of powerlessness. For 10 years, he refused to talk. Now, Inside Edition shows you the documented facts that support his claim of a close encounter of the real kind. I was so scared. The one UFO story you may have to believe. That's next time and finally today. For the last 20 years, folks in the Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts have been spooked by some spirits who apparently hang out in a ski lodge. Enter the amazing Kreskin and the amazing Scott Rappaport, who has our story. Amidst the eerie, icy beauty of Otis, Massachusetts, lurks a chilling, ominous presence that sent shivers through the community for nearly two decades. From within the dark depths of the town ski lodge, there's been a series of bizarre occurrences. Reports from workers of mysterious noises, voices, and footsteps in the halls. Ghostly visions seen on the walls. And always when the lodge was supposedly empty. There was something or someone here, or something unsettled. It would make your skin crawl. 
According to legend, the paranormal predator roams the rooms and corridors of the ski lodge to this day, and tonight we will attempt to find it. Enter the amazing Kreskin, world-renowned thought reader, mentalist, who tonight at the ski lodge will try to summon the spirit before a room full of onlookers and a bar full of locals, who've obviously summoned some spirits of their own. I feel wild. Now, this is where he starts to get dangerous, folks. The last time Kreskin felt this powerful on our show, the furniture started flying. Look, look, get this, get this, get this, look at this, look at this, look, look at this, 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 look at Kreskin's picked out 20 volunteers to participate in a seance-like ceremony. He tells everyone to concentrate on reaching out to the supernatural forces around them. Balancing a block of wood against a sugar holder, they wait, presumably for a sign from the great beyond. Then, as if on cue, Think of what just happened, folks, as you're standing here. Think of what's happening, folks. Now, for some reason, they're all imitating the wood, and they're dropping like flies. But don't you hold them in any way, shape, or form. That's fine. Isn't that wild? Uh, isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? Maybe it's just me, but does this remind you of something? I've fallen, and I can't get up. Try to get up as hard as you can. You try to get is that wild? What's going on here? <laughs> I think I'm having an affair no, with this guy. No, 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 oh, my God. Now, we don't really know what's going on here. And truth be told, we found all of this a little hard to believe. But the participants all swear this is not a fake. And after all, who in their right mind would want to be seen on national television looking like this? I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> oh, no. Well, after toying with the idea of leaving these people stuck on the floor for the rest of their lives, the amazing Kreskin takes the dreaded block of wood, turns it back upright, and miraculously, like the phoenix rising from the ashes, everyone is able to stand up again. Even poor Loretta, who, like everyone else, was completely freaked out. Isn't that wild? Oh, my God, I tell you. So what do you suppose it was that caused the wood to tumble and the humans to stumble? Well, the amazing Kreskin says there were three paranormal possibilities. Maestro? One. The power of suggestion. Two. There was a ghost. Four. Three. We found something. I don't know what. Only the shadow knows. Uh, the forecast calls for snow this weekend up there. We hope the spirits have mittens. And that is it for us today. We hope you have enjoyed Inside Edition. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching us. We'll see you tomorrow. Coming up next on Channel 7, Penny Daniels and Joan Lovett bring you 7.30 news like you've never seen before. She says, she says to me, she says, my place, I, I had to park there because my place, you, you can't park there with all the construction. Well, here's her place. Look at the construction. It's unbelievable. How would you handle something like that?